Having basic knowledge in color theory can help improve your coloring game in Photoshop, in Capture One, and in Lightroom. Color theory deals with four important things. The color wheel, color temperature, color harmony, and color psychology. The color wheel is a tool used to describe the relationship between colors. And this, as you see on the screen here, is the color wheel. In photography, we have three primary colors, which is the reds, the greens, and the blues. That's where we derived our RGB from. Secondary colors are derived from the addition of primary colors. That's where you have yellows, you have magenta, and you have cyans. Tertiary colors are colors derived from the addition of secondary colors to primary colors. That's where we have yellowish orange, bluish purple, greenish yellow. You guys see where I'm going with this. So if we see the interrelationship between the colors on the color wheel, it would then help us understand what to do whenever it is we are faced with an image with a lot of colors. When you take a look at this color wheel I have here right now, moving to the left of the red, that's clockwise, moving to the left clockwise direction, you realize it changes its colors towards the cool tone. Moving to the right, which is anti-clockwise, we realize it changes its colors into the warm tone, which then brings me to color temperature. Color temperature is how warm or how cool a color is. If we want warm reds, we end up seeing a lot of yellows in reds, giving us more oranges. If we want cool reds, we end up seeing more blues in there, giving us magenta, purple, blue, and the list goes on. How can we use such information when it comes to color grading? Let me quickly jump into color harmony. Color harmony has a lot of rules that can help you whenever it is your color grading using a color balance tool in any of the softwares I mentioned earlier. We have come, we have the commonly used one with the complementary colors. The complementary color for red is green. The complementary color for yellow should be blue. But technically, when you pick any editing software, the complementary color for red is cyan, yellow to blue, green to magenta, and the list goes on and on and on. So whenever you pick the color wheel, as you're seeing over here, you can clearly see what colors are closer to each other, what colors are opposite to each other. And this knowledge will help you color grade your image with a particular mood you have in mind. Now let's just jump into our image. I didn't mention color psychology because I want to say it here. Color psychology usually evokes emotion in a particular image. It's intentional the colors one puts in his or her image to tell whatever it is he or she wants to sell to their client. I put red in here just so that it could complement the greens in the frame. I have blues in here which are closer to cyan which can complement my red also. Her orange skin, or her, her orange tone skin can also complement my green. Red evokes love, red evokes heart, red evokes emotions. That is how or that is why you see red being predominantly shown in here. What I would quickly want to then jump into is to use whatever knowledge we've learned from the color theory in its application here. The first thing I want us to tackle is the color temperature. Color temperature, like I said, is how red or how cool a particular color is. Taking a look at this image, this definitely is not how I saw this um, this outfit when I was shooting or the frame when I was shooting. I know the color of my background, I know the color of this particular green over here. So we can see two monochromatic colors with different saturation and different lights in this body. The next thing to fixing your color balance or your color temperature is the tool right here in Capture One named the white balance. You can find this in Photoshop, you can find this in Lightroom also. The top of the stand has a gray point over there. The seed or the color I saw was gray. So I felt it's right to use that as my gray point or as my neutral point to give me the appropriate colors I actually saw when I was shooting. And these are colors close to what I saw when I was shooting with regards to the green canvas on the table and the green canvas as the background. Together with the whites I'm seeing here and the reds and her skin color. 
the goal of this particular image is to make sure I have most of my colors in the warmth region. Having this in the warmth region means I need more yellows and a bit of greens in there. Mind you, we are still selling on the green loop, so you see me use that very, very soon. The first thing I'll do after automatically fixing it with the gray points over here is to reduce the tint just so I still have some bits of greens in them. I want to tone down my reds. There are ways to go about toning your reds down, either to use saturation to reduce it or to introduce its complementary color. In photography, like I said, the complementary color for red is cyan, as you can see over here. So, I quickly want to state here that when you take a look at the histogram, we have the majority of our information here within our shadows. This box here represents your highlights, these two boxes represent your exposure or your metals, and this last box over here represents your shadows. The extremes are your whites and your blacks. So majority of the color information here are within our shadows. So whatever it is we do within our shadows, you're going to see much effects happening. I quickly also want to mention this particular image was shot with the 5D Mark IV. Canon cameras have a tendency of pushing a lot of reds in your shadows. Capture One can fix that by using the base characteristics, which you change this to pro standard and you're good to go. But I want us to use the knowledge on color grading to fix that. So I'll pick my shadows, make sure I move the hue into the cyan region. Then I'll move this all the way up just so that you see how effective this is going to be on our image. Then I fine tune it to the point where I assume there are no more reds affecting my image. So let me quickly show you a before and after. Before that, before pushing reds into the shadows and after pushing reds into the shadows. Do you see how it tones down the red and gives us more true red as compared to before? A friend of mine will say, I, I show you rich red than the more saturated red. The next thing I want to keep in mind, or I want you to keep in mind is, skin tones are usually found within the mid-tones. There are lots of stuff I've said about mid-tones, shadows, and highlights, but today take this away. You have majority of your skin tones within your mid-tones. So I'm going to warm up my mid-tones, which is the goal. Move it in between red and yellow, which then we both know as my orange. We can either push it to the tertiary color, which is yellowish orange or reddish orange, but I'm going to keep it within orange. Then I will then increase my saturation all the way up just to see how effective it will be. Then slowly I fine tune how much I want in there. Within my highlights, I mentioned I wanted to have a lot of greens in this image. So I'm quickly going to push this into the greens and send it all the way up just so that you see what's happening. And I bring this down a notch. Now I'm within my right to do a lot of things. I have color corrected this, I've color graded this, I've toned down certain colors I don't need in my image. I can equally warm up the highlights just so that I can have my whites looking true to tone. So somewhere here should be fine. Let's forgo the green for now. We'll come back to it very, very soon. Now I want to affect my skin tones. I want to show you the signature darkening of the skin that will make sure, yes, this is a dark skin model I'm working with. I'll come back to my color balance and in my mid tones, I'll reduce the luminosity and there I lose a lot of light in here. So I'll come back to my adjustments and introduce some white into my image, right? Which brings back some lightness into it. By doing that, I blow out the highlights over here. So I'm just going to also fix that perfectly. Now let's come back to the color. What next can we do? We've done a lot here. I'll come to my color editor. Looking at this image, this image could pass off for whatever it is I want to use it for. This is the before. This is where we started from. This is where we are at. I can export this and my clients will be very happy. But I want to take this a step further. I want to make sure the greens are matching. The green on the table is not as the same green I'm seeing on the background. So by doing that, I come to color editor, advance, pick up the color editor tool, 
select this particular grain make sure i view select color view selected color range just so that i can see where the selection is i want majority of the selection in there all right so let's open up our range this should be fine First off, we need to make sure this doesn't look bluish anymore or looks warm. And by that, we will change the color, which is the hue. Are we approaching it? I'll select again. Open up my scope or my range. Change the hue. I think we are approaching it. After, I'm going to reduce the luminance a tad bit and reduce the saturation just so that everything sells correctly and then my friends that's what you can do or how you can change your colors in capture one it's that easy now let's come back to the basic tab and go to the skin the skin usually is found within the oranges as i might have preached a lot of times i am going to reduce the lightness on the skin and by reducing the lightness on the skin, I introduce quite an amount of saturation. So I'm going to reduce the amount of saturation in there, just so it sits well within the image. Make it a tad bit reddish, and make sure the reds look a tad bit orange. I'll reduce the lightness in the reds, and I'll reduce the saturation in accordance, just so, you know, yeah, within what we are doing. Come to my yellows and reduce the saturation of the yellows at that bit. I keep it there. Now what's next? We have made sure we have changed the color gradient from or the image moved from this to this in the capture one. That's how easy it is to go about color grading or fine tuning your images to shield the mode you want to create. Let's take it a step further. I'll create a new field layer. Let's rename this CG1. So color gradient one. What can we do to this image? I want to add some blues within my shadows. I couldn't add them here just because I've already added cyan in my shadows over here. So what, that's one good thing about capture one. You can create layers and you can do Furthermore, adjustments. So I'll come back within my color balance. Here in my shadows, let's add the blues and see what will happen. So this is adding blues into my shadows. Before that, and after adding blues. You see how it even affects the skin color. It makes it look perfect. Let's change from blues to say, a purple. Uh, I like I like how the purple is affecting the green. Oh, what do you know? The purple is even a complementary color of a shade of green, which is yellowish green. I like it. In my midtones, I warm it up as usual every day. Then in my highlights, I am going to add green this time around, just to sell off the look I am going in for. So every part of the image which has much highlights in there will look greenish. I'm going to reduce the luminosity here again in my second color grading, which is the CG1. And this is the look. I think these days are sold when it comes to dark skin models. It sells the dark skin look. And that's why I love whatever it is I'm doing. I'm going to stick it up. by adding a tad bit clarity just to push you know the highlights and the shadows out add a little bit of vignette to this and oh not forgetting my curves here within my curves within my blue channel i want to still add some blues i mean we didn't add blues using the color balance so why not add blues over here now create a five points all channel curve and now lift some blues into the blacks and just see how that sells it. Look, I love it. Let's kill it more by adding 
some grains to this. So look that antique looking grain, so I'll go with hash grain. Let's double tap and see. Yep. So there my friends, you have this where we started. This is where we've ended up. If you think CG1 was too much, stylizing this particular image was too much. The one good thing about Capture One is you can always, always reduce the opacity of the layer you created. And there we have that. So we have this as our before and this as our after by adding another layer of color grade. But overall, this is where we started from and this is where we are at. Let me quickly push in some more vignettes so that we saw the look. And a little bit of saturation and brightness and contrast. Mind you, when I talk about color graded and seeing colors within the different tones in your image, I always tell people to shoot underexposed. Underexposed images are prone to quality and good coloring. So if you have an overexposed image, or a slightly exposed image just make sure you really really underexpose it because you had majority of our information within our shadows addition of color and removal of color was quite easy assuming it was really really exposed like this right i will really really take quite a while to see the coloring we did so that's why majority of my images are undertold and underexposed Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was impactful. I didn't wish for it to go this far. But for me to explain whatever it is I have to explain, just so that you understand, you just have to bear with me on the time. I hope it was impactful. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm glad you watched this video. Go practice on your image. Understand color theory. Color theory is just the four things I mentioned to you. Nothing more, nothing less. Just don't be scared about it. Subscribe to the channel, like, make sure you share this video. I was not going to do any editing video for this, but because I put it out on my Instagram story and I asked a couple of questions, I just wanted to share it so that you understand that it's not that difficult to go about color grading. But also, if you don't want to go through the shows of color grading, first is my digital store, a link in the description box below for TJD Color Styles. You know what? This video is sponsored by TJD Color Styles. I'm going to leave a link down in the description box below. Check it out. Purchase Capture One Styles. I have Lightroom, I have Photoshop, but I'm very particular about the Capture One Styles. They help a lot. And this is just a tip of the iceberg. Let me know down in the comment section below if you enjoyed this. And maybe, maybe in the near future, I'll do more. Enjoy color grading, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.